So today we have Ariel Cundy from Medical University of South Carolina College of Dental Medicine. Ariel, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. A little bit bored. How are you? I'm doing well. It's almost the same. I feel kind of bored, but hey, you know, at least we're here. It's a good day. So hey. <laughs> at least I can look outside and see sun. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Very true. But um, okay, if you can, to go ahead and get started, can you actually give us a, a, a brief summary of your dental school journey? So where you're from, where you went to undergrad, what you major in, and did you or did you not take a year off? So I'll try to make this as brief as possible because it is quite, a, <laughs> quite a story. So I'm originally from Mesa, Arizona. That's where I grew up. Um, I came out to South Carolina in 2009 for college, I got recruited to play at Winthrop University, which is where I went to undergrad. I played soccer there for my four years of undergrad. Um, I did take a year, I took a year and a half-ish off. Okay. Um, I moved to Charleston, where um, the dental school is, but I only didn't do anything related to dentistry at all. I worked at a bank. I was not ready to get into dental school. And then I decided, okay, it is what I want to do. I went back to Winthrop University in Rock Hill, South Carolina, and got my master's degree. So I spent two years getting my master's. And then um, I applied in the middle of my master's degree, got accepted, and I ended up attending MUSC straight from my master's in 2017. So okay. when I started. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, so obviously you have to take your DAT over. Well, not over, but you have to take it in general. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, everybody always wants to ask, what's like your number one tip or your, the number one resource that you would, you know, you would say with regards to the DAT? A little bit far removed for me just because I'm, you know, entering my fourth year. So it's really, I've already taken part one of boards. I'm studying for part two of boards right now. So it is a little bit far removed. So take this as the grain of salt. Okay. But I think the key in any standardized testing is practice tests. Yeah. practice test practice test practice test kill yourself on real life practice tests not even like sections of them like sit down take the full four hour exam or whatever it may be because that's probably one of the hardest parts about taking it isn't the material it's keeping your brain active for yeah. the full time and so i think the key for me in anything in the dat and um nbde part one was just to find as many full length practice exams as I could and I think for me the program for the DAT that helped for uh for that was crack the DAT mm -hmm. because they generate you can take the full exams you can just take you know science or whatever your weekend but I just think it's the practice exams that are really really helpful right right okay awesome awesome and so um you know we like to ask does your school have any type of like pre-dental day or anything like that so that uh pre-dents can actually like show face and you know i guess make themselves known within the school before yes, they apply. we do we actually have two opportunities for that two major opportunities that i can think of um first one i'm going to put a little plug in because i am going to be pr president of our american student dental association chapter uh this coming year so um asda has our pre-dental day uh this past year it was held in january so we did it really early. I have no idea at this moment when our next year is going to be just because of all okay, um. everything's unknown right now. So we're kind of holding on all plans, but um, we will have one. Um, we also, I'm a member of SNDA, Student National Dental Association, and I'm on the exec board for that. And right now ours is planned for June. So that's called Impressions Day, and that's also just the same kind of thing, a pre-dental day. You get to go through, we do mock interviews on, um, I think ASDA does, does mock interviews, SNDA does a really good tour, um, and they do a really nice panel, um, and they have like a really good variety of students that do a panel um, during that day, and then um, both of them, you get some sim lab activities, and you get some good like seminars type, seminar type uh short little lectures of what it's like and you know just good information so i think that one was planned mid-june again i don't know if that's going to be moved we kind of just have to wait and see but 
either of those two, you can go to ASDA's website or SNDA's website and get some more information or at least get a contact person to reach out and say, hey, I want to come. So Awesome. Awesome. And so a lot of our viewers, you know, as they should be, are a little bit nervous with regards to interviewing. So if you could kind of walk us through what your interview uh, was like. Well, if you get the privilege to interview at MUSC, you are lucky because compared to some of the other ones that I had, uh, MUSC was very relaxed. It's much more conversational. I think, so when I was going through interviews, and I'm pretty sure they keep it the same way, um, you all go in, they build you up. So it's not like one of those where they, you know, sort of make you explain why you're good enough. Mm -hmm. They sort of, when you get there from the get go, they're like, you guys have made it here. That means you're wonderful. That means you're smart. That means you're, you know, so they really build you up. And then you go in for two 30 minute interviews with two different faculty members. Um, and it's just a one on one interview. And I remember in one of mine, I think we talked about dentistry like two minutes and the rest of it was just sort of, they wanted to just know about me and about something that wasn't on my application. I fortunately had a ton of things to talk about. I tend to be a talker, so <laughs> it was okay, but it was very conversational. They more, it's more like they wanna know that when you're sitting in front of a patient, you can hold a conversation and really relate to a person rather than how much you know about dentistry because they know that you may not know very much and what you think you know might not be anything at all. So yeah. I would say um, at MUSC, it's, it's a really nice environment to interview in compared to some others. <laughs> and so quick question, quick little side question. Um, what made you choose uh, South Carolina? Oh gosh, so truly, um, my husband. <laughs> That's I, it. Yeah, so I'm a little older getting into dental school and I'm a little bit more advanced in our, we're more advanced. I was married going into dental school mm -hmm. and my husband, I came, Rock Hill, South Carolina is very, very close to Charlotte. So we're right there on that border of North and South Carolina. And my husband works in Charlotte and has a very good job and is lucky enough to have a salary that helps me kind of offset the cost of dental school. So I didn't have to worry so much about the tuition cost. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, definitely something you want to look at. Right. Um, but also just if I were to choose some of the other schools I got accepted to, uh, he would have had to just up and find a whole new job. We would have had to move or we would have had to do a really long distance and well, maybe when we were dating, I would have been okay with that. And I'm like, mm -mm, we're right. married now, we're going to stay together. So um, it was more just kind of where I was in my life. It just fit. He was able to keep his job and, and now we're able to be, you know, be sitting across the room from me right now. So <laughs> but no, no. But honestly, like, uh, no, I think that's a great point because even some of my classmates, you know, they've gotten married recently and they, you know, it's, it's really a group decision a partnership so it is what it is and i think everything that, is. <laughs> it is and it is what it is so, yeah. so that's awesome that's awesome okay and so uh let's go back in time a little bit to your first year yeah everybody wants to know what the first year is about you know <laughs> how was your first year as far as like didactic uh clinical experience were you able to pick up a handpiece all those different type of things it's hard <laughs> and i'm not gonna lie you know the first two years are hard. The good thing about, I think, MUSC and probably other schools, I, I wouldn't know, but they, I do feel like they did a very good job of like easing us in. So you're not all of a sudden hit with, oh my gosh, I can't handle this. I don't know. You know, I've never been in work so hard in my life, which I will tell you at some point in time during dental school, I would, you know, I said, can I actually do this? I have never had to work so hard at school in my entire life, but it's okay. Cause we all make it, you know? Yeah. So, um, I do think that that's one thing. I mean, didactically it's a lot. Um, but they, it's sort of, it starts with the easier things or the things maybe we've already been exposed to. And then it gains and gains and gains throughout your second year. And then you sort of hit at that peak for us, it's the second semester of your second year is the hardest, probably the worst time of your life, but it's just that four month period. And then you start clinics and life is 
change forever. Um, I'm trying to remember if we did pick up a, yeah, we do use hand pieces in our first year. Like we have sim lab classes, um, but nothing real, if that makes any sense. You don't really know it as a first year. You're like, I'm a dentist. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's not, you're not, um, I think maybe second semester you start learning how to crown prep and, and everything, but it's, compared to where you are, where you are, by the time you get into clinic, you realize like, oh, wow, I wasn't really doing anything. <laughs> so, but yeah, we do pick up hand pieces our first year. It isn't until the second semester. So like the first semester, I can't really remember actually using a hand piece or anything, but so, it was a few years ago. <laughs> are y'all able to actually go into clinic? to assist and do things like that? Yeah, we actually have to. Uh, your first and second year, actually as a first year, you come in and you get paired up with a third year. Oh, okay. So you have sort of a mentor that's assigned to you and they're the person that it, you kind of exchange information with and yeah. there's, they don't have to be because you can assist anyone. So there's no requirements there, but it's just sort of to facilitate the, hey, do you have anything in clinic today? So we actually, as first years, they have clinic time and that clinic time is blocked out on your schedule. So you don't have classes during that clinic time, one afternoon or two afternoons a, a week. And um, it's either used for perio instruction. So learning on each other, how to do pro fees or um, cleanings or how to, um, I don't know, like we don't do injections that year. You either, you learn some clinical skills on each other. Oh, taking impressions on each other, things like that. Um, or if you don't have, if you're not specifically that afternoon, you know, blocked to go to that instruction, then you're open and you are actually required to get like somewhere between 15 and 20 sessions a semester mm -hmm. of assisting swipes. So you'll go assist someone. It doesn't have to be your assigned third year, but it's easy to do that. Um, and once you're done assisting, the attending will kind of swipe on your um, your chart that you assisted that day. And so by the end of the semester, they just check to make sure everybody's got at least 15 or 20 or whatever the number was for that semester. So. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And so um, I'm asking everybody the same question, but what makes your school unique? You know, of course, you haven't been to any other dental schools, but right. you could say something, you know, like... I mean, granted, you know, I'm sure you have friends at other general schools, like something that you kind of noticed, like, wow, like I no other school does this and I'm happy to be here because of that. Yeah. Okay. I think this is unique, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Maybe you can help me and see if I need to talk about something else, but okay, I'm okay. pretty sure our school, our first years come in in June. Is that normal? Did you start school in June or did you wait until the fall semester? I think it was like the end of June. Yeah, I think we started like the end of June. I felt like we just started really early. And then, so, and I don't know again, is that we go from June, your first year last, the beginning of June, like they come in June 4th or 5th, and then they stay all the way until the end of the semester. So I guess end of April, mm -hmm. beginning of May type time and then they get the entire summer off so you get may june july three and a half months off mm -hmm. and you don't come back for your second year until august um until mid-august so i don't know i i just remember i felt like the other schools that i was looking at um your the break of summer was not nearly like that yeah you said three and a half months that seems like it's a really long, long break i went to europe <laughs> entire summer <laughs> wow, yeah wow. um you can have the option if you want to stay or if you are staying around you can get started on your junior research project because everybody has to do research and stuff mm -hmm. i didn't because i did it this year so i was fine but um i think it's unique that we get such a long break in between our first and second year however i think it's amazing i think i'd ra I, at first i thought it was a con to going to dental school at musc it was like oh man we have to start a whole month earlier or a whole two months earlier and then like you know i didn't get a you basically forego your first your summer in between getting accepted and going you basically yeah, just go but you get it back by getting a really long break in between first and second year. And it really helps break up the monotony of dental school a little bit. And it sort of makes 
in a way it makes the time go by so much faster because it's like you, your first year is done and over with, then you go on this summer vacation. Most of us did, um, or they worked or whatever you needed to do. And then you come back for three years and it just sort of, it, it breaks up that four feeling like your four years of going to the same place every day, sitting in the same room every day. Cause your first two years, you essentially are sitting in the same room in the every same day. seat all day, every day. So at least you get a long, long break in between that. And I do, I think, I think I really like that. Other than that, I really don't know anything. Right, right. It's hard to compare. Yeah. It's yeah. Hard. It's hard. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. But okay. So if you could go back, another, go back, another reflective question. If you could go back and talk to yourself while you were applying, what would be that like one piece of advice that you would tell yourself? Um, I would tell myself to stop like worrying that I wasn't good enough because you always when you're applying and I feel like a lot of people it's 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 competitive and you know it's competitive and you're always second guessing and you're thinking like oh okay I have this but this other person has this and I have this but I don't have this and um I would tell myself just like it's you're fine you're gonna be fine and you are fine and you're you know I think that that would be my biggest thing going into interviews and stuff. I, I, I would get really, really nervous. Like I get the shakes and things like that just because I'm had a huge self-confidence problem, but now being in dental school and around my peers and realizing that like I am, I fit right in that I don't feel like I'm the bottom of the, you know, I don't feel like anyone's the bottom of the chain because I feel truly like our whole class is very, we're all on par, you know, we're all together and we're all, you know, I'm not the smartest person in the class, but I do well. And um, I think that just, it, it would help take some nerves off if you could just, you know, have a little confidence in yourself and realize that no one sitting across from you is better than you are. Truly, yeah. truly, you're all. You, if you made it to an interview, you're good enough to be there. Yeah, yeah. No, imposter syndrome is a is a real thing. So, um, yeah, so <laughs> we take note of that. But no, thank you, thank you so much. If any of our viewers have any type of questions, what's the best way that they can uh, get in contact with you? Um, I think the best way would be through email. I am a serial email checker and I have to make sure that my inbox is completely empty all the time. So I will say that um, my email address is my last name at musc.edu. So it's pretty easy. It's K-U-N-D-E at musc.edu. Awesome. Um, and I typically respond very quickly. So yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Of course, I'll put that in the description box yes. for everybody. Um, okay. But once again, we want to say thank you so much. You know, your, your time is valuable. Uh, so we do appreciate Less you. Less so now. <laughs> right. I, mean, I didn't want to say it, but yeah. No, it's okay. <laughs> we have a little bit more time now, but we definitely do appreciate you. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate the chance to, to talk and have something to do today. So. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Everybody, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Um, if you have any questions for us over here at Future DDS, you can shoot us a DM at underscore Future DDS on Instagram. Um, but if not anything else, see y'all next time.